Building on that. You know, it's a process. You know, this year is going to be another process. Even, who cares what we did last year? You know, when we show up on the floor, we're not the Eastern Conference champions. You know, it's a totally different year. There he is, LeBron, two months shy of turning 31 in his 13th season and is trying to make it to the NBA Finals for the sixth straight time. Stephen A., what are we going to see from King James this season? More the same. I don't think... Um... I think that you'll expect to see him less minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I think as he gets older, he gets wiser. Um, his physical dominance over the rest of the sport, I think, will dissipate a smidgen simply due to the fact that you have to take into account that he's not getting any younger. He is 31 years of age, uh, but it's almost. becoming to be almost 31 yeah. years of age, but it's becoming to be an older mm -hmm. because of the mileage. Yeah. Yeah, but the course. fact that he's a, he's accustomed to playing into April, May and June mm -hmm. because he's accustomed to doing all of these things. There's a lot of wear and tear on the body. This is why it was so important for David Griffin to keep the team intact and to get a Tristan Thompson resign to have him and love. How it's yeah. important to get a Kyrie back. Um, the J.R. Smiths of the world, acquiring Mo Williams in the offseason. <clears throat> Excuse me. You've got to get these guys because during the regular season, LeBron doesn't need to really be playing more than 30 minutes a game. You know, it's, it's almost like you really, you really wish he had Greg Popovich. I think the masterful job of the, of the of year, uh, you know, the season before last when the Spurs won the title, how every single member of the San Antonio Spurs, including Kawhi Leonard, all Low played 30. 30 minutes or lower. Yeah. No one made I mean, it's, un it's okay. unreal. Yeah. Only Greg Popovich has proven he could do something like that. Yep. And that's, and that's what makes you feel sorry for LeBron because I like David Blatt. I don't have a problem with David Blatt. Remember last year I was of the mindset, give the man a chance. Yep. You understand, even though, you know, he wasn't everybody's first choice, I would have preferred to see Mark Jackson coaching that team. But give the man a chance. It's just that. I don't know how you can manage those minutes. So LeBron will do it himself. I think he'll take less minutes. Um, I think he'll look to get others involved. I don't think you'll see him as aggressive offensively. Yeah. I think he has a number of successful years ahead of him. My issue with LeBron is one thing and one thing only. And last year was so incredibly unfair to him because, my goodness, you know, two of the big three go down. and I mean, it just, to me, it was just unfair the load he had to carry but in the end you have four finals losses mm. i've gotten to the point where i would rather see lebron lose earlier than go to the finals really? okay. and lose again I, I just don't want him to lose in the finals i if, if you're gonna lose lose before the finals because it's nothing worse than getting so close mm. and then falling down mm -hmm. and that's happened to him on four occasions and it could happen a fifth and i don't wish that yeah. on him for LeBron's sake, I hope you're right about his reduced minutes this year. Yeah. This is his 13th NBA year, as Molly points out. Michael Jordan played a total of 13 years for the Chicago Bulls. So LeBron's getting up there in NBA age. Mm -hmm. But Stephen A., the one thing I love about LeBron James, he loves to play basketball. I don't think he has nearly enough respect for David Blatt to treat him like he's his Greg Popovich. Like, no, he oh, coach, he does. if you tell me to sit, I, I'm going to sit. No, he's not going to sit. So I'm not sure the minutes will be as dramatically reduced as they should be. Because if LeBron is as smart as you say in his, he is. his maturity, then, then he should take nights off. He, he should play a few minutes some games. Mm -hmm. he, you have to. In fact, I would like to see the Miami Heat win home court advantage over the Cleveland Cavaliers because if, if they did it would say that LeBron just didn't play that much and then I would still go ahead and pick the Cavaliers even without home court to beat D Wade and company in the Eastern Conference Finals. You got to remember a couple of things to throw out here. LeBron James has compiled 35,000 plus minutes in the it's regular absurd. season and 7,500 minutes in the postseason. It's that's over. That's nearly yep. 43,000 minutes he has compiled. That's number one. Even though he averaged 36 minutes last year, he averaged 42 in the playoffs. Yep. For his career, he's averaging 39 minutes a game. Yep. That's going to have to diminish if LeBron wants to stick I around agree. being LeBron for the next five, six, seven years. All right.
We got to go to break here because there's one more topic we need to discuss. Derek Rose, he's going to be back on the court in Chicago. What can his teammates expect from him this season? And what do we expect? Bulls discussion, that is next. Jerry Jones said on 105.3 The Fan in Dallas that his view of the Greg Hardy sideline confrontations is the same that it was on Sunday. Jones supported Hardy, saying he was just firing the team up and that he's one of the real leaders of the team. Skip, mm. what's your reaction to what Jerry had to say? I don't like it. I said yesterday to you, Stephen A. Smith, I wanted when Jerry Jones had a chance to view the video of this incident, I wanted Jerry to take a stand on this day, Tuesday, and reprimand Greg Hardy for his actions of breaking into the middle of that special teams huddle. Mm -hmm. And from what I, again, we're just having to go off the top of our heads yeah. here off these quotes. He didn't really even address that. He dodged the, the question basically and said he's still, I'm just paraphrasing, he's still all in on Greg Hardy, is looking to sign him long term. He's a relatively young player and he's part of the Cowboy future. I did not want to hear that today because Jerry Jones is not only the, the owner and president of this team, he is the general manager. He manages the football part of this organization and a strong message needed to be sent that it is completely unacceptable for Greg Hardy to break into the middle of a special teams huddle to blast the special teamers and get to the point of getting so out of control that the assistant head coach and special teams coordinator was forced to try to shove him back out of that huddle and a confrontation ensued that in included Devin Street and finally Des Bryant. Wholly unacceptable, but there is a time and a place for that kind of passion to overflow, that kind of rage to win to be channeled in the direction of special teams players who laid down on the job and allowed a 100-yard kickoff return that lost the football game sure. and that time and place might be over on the, the sideline on the bench area where you, you take one at a time and you say what are you thinking about and where was your effort and where's your guts and heart young man because I think Greg Hardy has the potential to become a veteran leader of this team but he has now only played two games for this team and I don't think it would be out of bounds for the owner president general manager to put him back in his place because, as you said, the sometimes puppet head coach is not going to do that. I believe Tony Romo did try to do that because the Dallas Morning News reported that Romo went up to Greg Hardy during the media time in the locker room and pulled him aside and talked to him for several minutes. And I don't know exactly what he told him. I, I'm going to guess that he told him, watch what you say to the media. Don't dig a deeper hole. So we got the no comment, no comment, no comment. Thank you very much, media. I wanted to hear something constructive, objective from Jerry about Greg Hardy, and, and I didn't, and I'm disappointed in Jerry, and he's now said himself, I, I opened the show by saying he's the biggest, easiest target in sports, and now it will be open season on Jerry Jones all day long today. Your thoughts? Skip Bayless, <clears throat> am I correct in, in, in surmising that what you're saying essentially is that you have a problem with the timing of what transpired with Greg Hardy yep. and how this is not the time or the place or for for no. for Jerry Jones to oh. support Greg Hardy this is oh, not that, the time today is right. not now that right. you've had a chance right. remember when he was asked after the game he's outside the locker room mm -hmm. and he said I I didn't see it what I'm, what right? I'm saying to you is that in the grand scheme of things as uncomfortable as it is for everybody to admit what you really have a problem with is how stuff looked as opposed to what happened. And the reason why you have a problem with how stuff looked is because of a checkered past that will not be able to escape nope. Greg Hardy. Yep. That's the reality, okay? And Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones willing to conduct business as usual and to shove this aside as an aside, dare I say, and I'm certainly not agreeing with this, I want everybody to know this, but everybody out there, are we, and I don't mean this like intentionally like Jerry Jones means for it to be perceived this way, because I'm sure he's not thinking about this. But are we wondering now, is there any wonder as to why issues of domestic violence and stuff were basically shoved under the rug, per se? Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't the issue that it needed to be? Because think about this. If there were no video mm -hmm. from Ray Rice... Yeah. 
who's to say people would react the way that they are right now about Greg Hardy? You see what I'm saying? Because if you're looking at the NFL culture, you have a 71-year-old billionaire who happens to be the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, you know, owns the billion-dollar playpen, et cetera, et cetera. And what is he doing? He's basically saying, look, man, he's relatively young, and his skill set is something that we need. You know, because he's trying to win football games. And in the immediate aftermath of Greg, ha Greg Hardy, I'm not going to engage in condemnation. Yep. But I will say this, I mean, I'm talking about based off of Sunday's, Sunday's game. I'm not going to engage in condemnation, but I will say this, did he not look scary to you? He looked pretty damn scary to me. Mm. And, 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 and when you looked at him out of control, yeah. I saw the football player, you saw the football player, frustrated by the level of ineptitude and the lack of days ago yep. effort put forth by the special teams. Yep. The critics of Greg Hardy, however, saw, oh, that's what she was talking about. Mm -hmm. That's correct. No, when, right. when they were, am I lying? No, so, you're so, right. And, right so, or wrong. and that's my point. Yep. So gr either Stephen and Jerry Jones don't know, yeah. or they know and don't care nearly as much as they do about trying to win for a change. And that's what this is right yep. here. So what I'm saying to you is, let's understand something. What you're really appalled by based off of Sunday was the timing. Yes, and the they're timing, about to go back out on the and, field. And, and the timing of it has everything to do with mm -hmm. Greg Hardy's past. If this were another play, you would just want to say he's immature. But Greg Hardy, I don't Greg think Hardy, I'd say that's out of bounds. I, I I'm not saying, I'm not saying you're yeah. saying that. I'm not. I know we, we all know it's yeah. out of bounds. Yeah. I'm saying you would attribute it to immaturity, and that player has to be disciplined. Whereas in the case of Greg Hardy, we're more vehement about yeah. it because people looked at him and said, "Yo, there's something unstable about that brother, yeah. right or wrong." That's what they were saying. Okay. That's the bottom line. All right. Look, I, just my personal yeah. view here. I've told you before, I would not have signed it. Right. Do, do I think that he committed heinous domestic violence? I do, even though his conviction got overturned yes. when it went to the jury trial because she didn't mm -hmm. show up and the police indicated she was paid off. But getting back to cowboy signing, remember, Jerry's daughter, whom I know named Charlotte, mm -hmm. she's a very bright woman. She's a cowboy's yeah. executive. Yeah, and she made a big case at that time. This is a great opportunity for us with Greg Hardy to address this issue, keep it at the forefront. And I'm not sure that's happening just yet. Not sure. No. In fairness to both Stephen and Jerry Jones, yep. the resident cowboy hater, that's just playing games, mm -hmm. having fun, in all seriousness. I don't believe they're intentionally insensitive. I think they're focused on winning, yeah. winning, and sometimes that blinds you to the sensitivity yes. that you need to have towards others. I don't believe for one second that they intentionally are being insensitive. No, but winning is paramount. Speaking of winning, NBA season kicks, kicks off tonight, and what player is under the most pressure this season? Hmm, KD, CP3, we'll get into that in just a bit. Stay here.